Watch your favorite streamers, whether it be Mongrel, Mr. Savage, or Ninja, we always see their performance at its peak, all the time. Okay, let me ask you this, have you ever just sat back and thought to yourself, how exactly do these pro players hop on stream and perform so phenomenally well? That's precisely why we're bringing you this video. Hey, what's up guys? Once again, this is Keith Allen, and today we're gonna be bringing you three warm-up routines that will improve your Fortnite skills and get you those battle royales. And when you're done with these warm-up routines, head over to Instapro to practice your new skills in a match with guidance from one of our coaches. Okay, if you take a look at players like Zex Rowe, you're gonna see something very distinct. He has aim that is unmatched, first of all, and he's able to seemingly turn the tables around in mere seconds. In fact, his aim is what sets them apart from the rest and allows them to clutch up. In Fortnite, aim, unfortunately, is sometimes overlooked. But if you miss your shot, then all your flashy edits and crazy builds, well, they go to waste. Just like that. Training your aim for a minimum of 10 minutes a day can have impactful results and definitely put you amongst the top of the top. Don't you wanna be known as an insane editor, builder, or someone with crazy aim? Practice these methods every day for around 30 minutes and you'll be on your way to reaching the top. Okay, so let's dive into a few ways you can improve your aim today. All right, first up, we have Kovacs Aim Training Game. Now, aim is probably the first thing you need to warm up. The reason for this being is that if you hop into a game or creative, your shot will be off, and you won't be able to hit your target, and all the rest of your warm up has no real use. The first most effective warm up routine that I and many others use is called Kovacs Aim Trainer. It's a game that stimulates real shooting environments, helping you improve your aim in all aspects, such as flicks, tracking, and so on. Personally, the tracking aspect is the most effective for me. For those of you who don't know what tracking is, it's the traditional type of aim where you follow your target with your crosshair. It's tough to do, especially when people are moving around quickly. This is why we see players in late game environments getting the most kills. So I'm sure by now you've been wondering, which courses in Kovacs Aim Trainer? It's simple. The courses that provide optimal tracking practice are Ascended Tracking V2 or V3. If you want to train your flicks, then any variation of Tile Frenzy will work. But we have one important question, which aim is more important? While you should strive to improve both types of aim, the most prominent kind of aim is tracking. While flicking is super effective and is the only way to implement chip damage, consistency is what really scores big on our board. I mean, why be 90% accurate when you can be 100% accurate? Let's take a look at a good comparison of two players who use seemingly different aims. First, we have Mongrel, who is probably one of the snappiest players around. His entire game is built around it. Flicks are a big part of his game. Tifu's specialty, on the other hand, is tracking. This guy is able to glue his crosshair into you, and once he gets you low, he has a solid flick to finish you off. While you definitely can alternate between the two, when we look at Tifu, he just has plenty of stats to back up his ability to perform both types of aim. Now think of how often targets are stationary in Fortnite. Most of the time, players are jumping all around, and tracking is the most consistent type of aim. You use tracking for snipers, hipfire SMGs, ARs, even shotguns sometimes. If we talk about the tactical shotgun, it's almost purely tracking. Okay, okay, now don't think we forgot about all you controller players. You know we have a special place in our heart for you. <laughs> With the advent of creative, Epic gave many content creators the ability to make maps. Many of these maps have come out and there are dozens of maps for aim training. Some would even argue that creative aim courses are more effective than Kovacs. Some notable creative aim courses include Beaks, Donny SCs, and much more. Okay, check this out. We have an entire thread on people debating whether or not Kovacs is actually any better than Creative Aim Maps. One user said this, I couldn't agree more. Kovacs is better for training your consistency with aiming and mouse movement, like those fitness gyms where people run through tires and do high jumps and run sprints. Fortnite Aim is better for situational muscle memory and is more akin to one being a friend and shooting on a goal in a sport. Both Kovacs and Creative do have their ups and downs, okay? But when it comes to Fortnite's situational muscle memory, Creative takes the cake. That's why controller players shouldn't feel bad. There are tons of phenomenal controller players, such as Ghost Iza and Aiden, that unleash the full potential of controllers. So what do you guys think? Is everyone just riding the Kovacs bandwagon or is Kovacs actually better than Creative? One other thing I like to mention is that in Creative, you actually are playing against real Fortnite scenarios, whereas Kovacs is more of a general mouse accuracy trainer. Okay, well, we've seen all the details improve needed to let us know aiming is must on a warmup. Now, what comes next? Let's find out. Okay, now we have editing. When aim is all said and done and you're looking for another good way to warm up, editing is your friend. 
Not only does editing provide optimal finger warm-up, but its purpose actually serves twofold. It allows you to practice practical edits that you otherwise might not have done in real games. I'm sure you've seen many players attempting to edit really fast. And a lot of times this leads to them getting stuck on an edit more often than not. I mean, that's because people don't tell you that you need to practice to perfect your edits. To avoid these kind of mistakes, every editor that you see out there, whether it be Raider, Manga, or Bugha, practices edits. Trust me. Players all spend a reasonable amount of time training their edits. Guys, you can only progress so far with just simple gameplay. Think of how many edits you do per game, all right? Maybe five, 10 at the max. One minute of editing, you're already doing more edits than 10 games combined. Training your edits, it's a must, and I can't stress it enough. The most recommended course I like to give you guys is Speedy Gonzalez. If you're new to editing, I highly recommend this course. It's a 15 minute course that involved a few core edits, including tunneling for high level scrim lobbies. What sets this course apart from the rest is that it really forces you to do edit after edit for minutes at a time. Now, if you're already at a higher level and you wanna cut the cheese, <laughs> there's another course which is much shorter and provides you with practical edits you need. This map by Kandu should tremendously help you guys. This course is a lot more realistic and has all the core edits that you'll need in games. Both these courses are great and we highly recommend that you use them. It requires minimum effort and has all the edits you need, from code edits to side jumps to double down edits and so forth. Now let's head over to the final segment to conclude the video. What is our third and final warm-up tip? Hmm, well, that's right guys, you guessed it, it's building. Now before we hop into the building, we need to ask ourselves, can I just start building in creative randomly? Yeah, you can, but there's a twist. It's well known even amongst top coaching sessions that doing something without intent or just randomly serves no constructive purpose. Chances are that if you free build every day without practicing specific techniques, it won't help you very much. Sorry to disappoint you. So now we get down to what techniques you should practice. Start off by merely doing 90s. As many of you already know, 90s were a thing of the past but never really lost their touch. It's still the fastest way to take the high ground in virtually any scenario. After about one to two minutes of those, try practicing double wall ramp rush and edit through them. This technique is effective in every area of the game, guys, and will prevent the enemy from being able to knock you down. Practice this for about one to two minutes, and then let's head on over to our next warm-up. Tunneling is often overlooked, all right? We sometimes think it's only effective in-game. And even then, not all the time thanks to launch pads and rifts. But tunneling is a method even the top pros practice every day. At least once a game you need to tunnel, and the better you get at it, the more fluent variations you can try. You can tunnel using walls and floors or pyramids of walls. Check out these two variations. Two more techniques that will help you tremendously are the double pyramid edit and the high ground retakes method. The double pyramid edit is done by placing a floor and pyramid above your ramp and editing through quickly. Now, this technique helps you get high ground easier by denying your opponent the ability to block you off using a floor. In the past, it would suffice to play only a pyramid, but now it's absolutely necessary that you place both floors and pyramids. So start off slowly and you will become faster with time. One mistake we see all the time, to be honest, is when players try to move on too quickly. Guys, you need to start off from level one, not jump to level 10. Just to let you know, the top pros even started off slowly, and now they're editing at speeds they weren't even imaginable. Okay, the last technique is none other than the high ground retake. I caution that this method is not easy, but after some practice, it will help you immensely. Okay, so we're gonna start off slowly, and later you can add in variations. So let's review what we learned. Practicing your aim in either creative maps or Kovacs can have drastic results, guys. Don't take my word for it, just look at the pros. Don't you wanna surprise your friends with insane headshots? So what is 10 minutes a day practicing your aim? Next, editing is so essential. We use edits in everything, from wall edits, floor edits, to pyramid edits. Warm up your editing. If you don't, hopping to a real game and missing an edit can get you killed. Third, practice your building techniques, not just random ones. You need to understand what you are building. Build with a purpose. All these warm-up tips will only cost you 30 minutes of time, okay, and take you a long, long way. So at the end of the day, to be real, we see pro players aren't fluent because they're just talented. What they don't tell you is that they've gone through all the